Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Tech Tuesdays lesson. Today we are going to use Microsoft Make Code Arcade to create a space themed collection game. In this video you will learn how to code a sprite, change backgrounds and add features such as sound and scores into your game. I will then give you a few ideas on how these skills can be used across the curriculum. Today, your learning intention is to use a visual programming language to create a simple game. Microsoft Make Code Arcade is an example of a visual programming language and you've maybe seen other ones before too, such as Scratch or Scratch Junior. At the end of the lesson, you will know you have been successful if you can identify and use different coding blocks while explaining what they do. If you can join coding blocks together to create a script and if you can check your code for errors. Errors are just little mistakes and the same as when you're learning anything new it's always good to make mistakes because it gives your brain a challenge and helps you to improve your knowledge for the next time. So please don't worry if you do make any little mistakes you can always rewind the video to have another look at the code you need. Before we start, let's have a think about your prior knowledge. This means things that you already know before the lesson. Can you describe what a visual programming language is? Can you describe what a sprite is? How do you put pieces of code together? And what is it called when we have more than one block of code joined together? Your teacher might want to pause the video here to give you a chance to discuss with your partner. Now we are ready to access the starter project. If you haven't already, you can access it by scanning the QR code on the screen, by clicking the link or by typing the link into your browser bar. You might want to pause here to get yourself organised to start. After you open the starter project, your screen should look a little something like this. We have two sprites or characters already on the screen who are a bit stuck together, but don't worry, we'll fix that later. To enter the project, click on the edit code button up at the top and your screen should now look like this. Now if this is your first time using Make Code Arcade or any sort of coding platform, this screen might look a little bit scary because it has lots of information on it. But please don't worry, we'll go through each part so that you know exactly what you're doing. On your left over here is the game simulator. This is where your blocks of code will be translated to let you play your game. You can use the arrows and the buttons to control things in your game, just like you would with something like a switch. Next, we have our block categories. This is where we find our blocks of code to help us create our game. There are lots of different categories, but it's helpful that they all have their own color to help us find things we are looking for. Then we have the workspace. This is where we drag, join and move around all of our blocks of code. And if we want to delete any or if we make a mistake, we just drag the block back over to the menu, let go and it will disappear. Finally, if we look down at the bottom of the screen, we can see the title of the project. If you like, you can click on this part and use the delete button to remove the title and then type to insert your own name as the new title. Let's pause here to let you name your project. Now that we have an idea of how Make Code Arcade works, let's start coding. We can see from the simulator that we already have a robot, Cody, and a star sprite in the game. There are also two blocks of code on the workspace to help us get started, and one of them has some hidden code. To see it, 
we're going to click on the little arrow on the green block. You should now see some of the code that is already loaded onto the page for you. It is important not to remove or edit any of this code as it's there to give us a starting point for our sprites. Now, let's get started with adding our own code. Part of the game is for Cody to try and catch stars, so we have to make sure that he's able to move around the screen. As for now, he's just stuck to our little star. So first, we're going to go into the controller menu. It's the dark red one that has the control on the picture. We need the first block that says move my sprite with buttons. When you hover over each block, you can see that it lights up yellow to help you see which one you are choosing. You can either click the block or drag it onto the workspace. Now that I've got it on there, you can see that it has turned grey. This is Make Code's way of telling us that it isn't doing anything just now. It needs to be connected to a controlling block. Luckily, we have one of those on our workspace. Our big green start block is a controlling one and acts like the boss. It tells all the code attached to it to start working as soon as the game begins. Drag your block onto the green one like a puzzle piece and you will notice that it turns its own dark red colour. Now we know that it's working and we can test it by using the arrow keys on our keyboard or on the simulator. Let's pause here to make sure you've attached the first controller block and you can test whether Cody is able to move around your screen. Now that Cody is ready, we want to choose a background for our game to make it look a little more interesting. To do that, we need the Scene Blocks menu, which is the dark blue one with the picture of the tree. Again, there are lots of blocks to choose from, but we are going to go down to the fourth one down that says Set Background Image To and drag it onto our workspace. Again, the block has gone grey because I haven't joined it onto a controlling block. We want the background to be there from the very start of the game. So the same as our last one, we are going to pop this on to the green controlling block. But you might notice the background hasn't changed yet. That's because we have to use this little grey square to decide which background we would like. Once we click on it and we open this menu, we are going to choose the gallery option up at the top. And here you can see lots of great backgrounds to choose from. But because ours is a space game, we are going to choose the pink planet background and click on it. Straight away, it opens up in the editor. Here is where you would add any details that you wanted to or change any colours. But for right now, we are happy with our background and we're just going to click the green done button in the bottom of the screen. And after a few moments, you should now see the space background appearing on your simulator. So, so far, we have our background ready and we have Cody able to move around the screen. Let's pause there to make sure you're caught up with this part of code. Cody's job in this game is to catch the stars, but you will notice if he touches the star, nothing happens. Our next job is to create some code to let him collect the star. To start this off, we need to look at our blue control block now that is already on the screen. You might notice that I can't see the whole block, but luckily I can move my workspace so that I can focus on this part better by using the scrolling bar down at the bottom and dragging it along. My old code is still there, but it means I can focus on this new part of the code. We want the star to move around the screen each time Cody catches it so that the game can continue. Because our star is a sprite, we need to use the blue sprite menu for this, 
with the picture that looks like a paper aeroplane. We're going to move down four blocks and choose the set my sprite position to X and Y. And on our workspace, we are going to clip that on our blue control block and also use this little drop down menu to choose the word star so that we know which sprite we are talking about. The next part is a little bit tricky, so we'll go nice and slow, but remember you can always pause and rewind if you need to repeat any of the code. Our simulator screen is like a map with lots of invisible little numbers on it. So when we want the star to move, it's going to go to one of these numbers, even though we can't see them on there. For this, we need to use the maths button. If we scroll down a little bit, maths is the lilac coloured one. We're going to move all the way down and we want this button that says pick random 0 to 10. Drag it onto the workspace but instead of adding like a puzzle block this time, when you put it close to this little text field and let go, you will see that it pops into position there. The next step is to change the numbers. So instead of 0, we are going to type in 10. And instead of 10, we're going to type in 160. 1, 6, 0. Then we are going to repeat that last step again. So go back to the lilac maths button with the calculator picture, scroll down until we find pick random 0 to 10 and this time we are going to pop this one in next to the Y text field and we are going to change the numbers again. So 0 becomes 10 but this time 10 becomes 120. 1, 2, 0. We're going to take a little pause here to give you a chance to look over this code. Welcome back everyone. Now it's the moment of truth where we test our code to see if it has been successful. If it works, the star should move around the screen when Cody touches it. Remember, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard or the joystick arrows on the simulator. Let's have a try. You did it! Well done! Now we're going to add a few more details that will make our game even more exciting. Usually when we play games, it's fun to keep score to see how many points we can get. You might have already spotted in the top corner of our game there's a little zero inside a box. That is actually our score. But when we move Cody around the screen and he collects stars, the score doesn't change. So that's the next thing we have to code onto our game. We can do that by using the dark pink info button with a little person on it. And in this menu, we go down four places and choose the change score by one. And now we can have a little test to see if that works. You should see every time Cody catches a star, the score is going up. So, so far our game is working and it looks amazing. But to make it a bit more fun, we're also going to add some sounds into it. And we can do that by using the music button, which is the pink one with the headphones on it. When we go in here, we're looking for the third block of code that says play sound badding until done. So let me drag that onto my workspace. And now I'm going to choose the sound that I would like by using the little drop down menu. There are so many in there for you to pick from, 
but I'm going to go right down to the bottom and choose beam up. And again, I'm going to use the drop down menu to make sure it plays in the background and not until done. That means it will be playing all the time over the top of the game. So now that I'm happy with my sound block, I can go and attach it onto our control block and see what happens in the game. Let's test it out. As you can hear, every time Cody touches the star, it makes the beam up sound that I have coded in there. Let's have a little pause here for you to create that code. Our game is now completed, but you might be thinking to yourself, this is a really easy game. Because really, you could be catching those stars all day and getting a million points. So one last thing that you could add as a challenge is a countdown timer. And that would mean each person who played the game only has a certain amount of time to catch as many stars as they can. If we're using a countdown, it would have to be from the very start of the game. So that means we would need to use our scroller bar again and go back over to our green start code because we want the countdown timer to start from the very beginning. So to find the countdown timer, we're going to go back into our dark pink info button with the little person on it. And we have to scroll down a little bit this time to find the countdown section. Now that I found it, I want to choose the coding block that says start countdown 10 and it has the little S on there to mean seconds. 10 seconds might be a bit too short, so I'm going to change mine to 20. And then clip it on to the script so that it applies in the game. You can now see the countdown timer has appeared at the top of the screen. So finally, it is time to test our game. Over at the simulator, we have this little square button on the corner, which means make full screen. Click that. You can use play to start the game and stop to stop the game. Let's take a moment to play our creation and check that all is working well. Well done everyone and thank you so much for joining our code along today. I hope you've had fun and have lots of ideas for things that you might want to code by yourself. Stay tuned so that we can review our learning and have a little think about all the new skills we've talked about today. Once again, a huge well done for completing our code along today. Now, just before we finish, let's have a little reflection to think about all the things we were actually learning while we were having fun creating our coding game. Can you now give an example of what a visual programming language is? And a big clue is to think about what we were using to create our game. Think about some of the coding blocks you were using. We had motion blocks, we had countdown blocks, we had sound blocks. How did they affect the sprites or the other things in the game? Do you think you could have a go at creating a game like this with different sprites or by using a different theme and choosing a different background? There are so many ways you could edit the game to make it your own. If you get time, have a little experiment and see what you can come up with. And just before we go, here are some suggested activities to show how you could use your coding skills across the curriculum. In literacy, you could program your sprites to tell a story. 
In music, you could create your own music player that lets out sounds. In health and wellbeing, you could create a collection game like we did today, but have the sprite only collecting the healthy foods rather than the unhealthy foods. Or for art and design, you could even create a greetings card if it's someone's birthday or if you just want to say thank you to them. Lots of these skills are covered on the Make Code website through their skill maps. They are very simple and easy to follow so that you can try them independently. And lastly, don't forget to share your learning with us online at NL Digital School. Thanks for coming along today and we hope to see you soon for more Tech Tuesdays. Bye everyone!